You know what? Let's leap past the standard review intro with a bit of Peter Parkour and swing into the verdict early. This, my friend, is an amazing Spider-Man game. Hell, I'd go so far as to call it spectacular. Because the fact is, Marvel's Spider-Man on PS4 whipped me into a frenzy very early on, and I found myself foregoing sleep on my first run through it. Clearly, it's an insomniac game by both name and nature. It's also one of, if not the, best open-world superhero titles I've ever played in my 30-plus years of gaming. And believe you me, I've suited up for all of the greats. Superhero games may be in relative short supply nowadays, but in the 80s, 90s and noughties, we were chockers with them. When pulling on some parenthood jeopardizing lycra in this game, I just knew I'd be subconsciously weighing it against a few genre gems from the past. Spider-Man 2, The Hulk Ultimate Destruction, The Punisher, and Saints Row 4 ought to be spider common sense comparisons for any critic, not to mention franchises like Prototype, Infamous, and the current king of the genre, Batman Arkham. How does the spider stand up to the bat? At a minimum, I'd say Marvel Spider-Man matches the best efforts of Rocksteady Studios, which, in my humble opinion, was Arkham City. And while it's extremely obvious that one has drawn inspiration from the other, what we've got here are quite different experiences in terms of tone and gameplay. In the Arkham series, you go full DC Comics. You're the stoic, no-nonsense Batman, a martial arts man-tank who can hold his ground and counter whatever attack comes his way. Conversely, Spidey has awful luck. He's all about his quips, thwips, and hyperactively zipping about the battlefield. If you try to hammer out combos on even ground with large mobs of the mob, you're going to be Splatterman in no time. You'll quickly learn that combat is a game of distance in this incredibly gratifying ballet of violence. What we have here is gravity-defying wire foo where you're encouraged to send enemies flying back to isolate them for uninterrupted pummelings, or you might deftly shift them upwards with a launcher to give yourself a second's worth of breathing space. Like Arkham, incoming hits and bullets are telegraphed to you with a warning halo and can be avoided. Unlike Arkham, that avoidance is just a dodge to safety, not a counter hit that will feed into your existing combo chain. Skillful Spider-Men and women will never need to risk their combo chain by evading an enemy's punch. Once one isolated goon has been dealt with, you should have already figured out a new way to divide and conquer the remaining collective. Possibly by web yanking in a new victim, either upwards or across the room, or you can grapple hook zip over to somebody sitting on the fringe. Alternatively, you can just wade into the baddies with one-hit execution moves after you've staggered everybody with a big ground punch, a weaponized environmental object, or a hip-fired web gadget. Building up a three-tier focus meter is imperative, and you'll need to make split decisions on how to spend it. Should you refill a small chunk of your health, or keep saving for that one-hit kill move? Onslaughts of 80 to 90 hit combos become par for the course by game's end. Every fight also comes with a bunch of randomized secondary objectives to tick off for bonus XP. It's an addictive little risk-reward system that got me to try new things. The fisticuffs constantly evolves too, and it never once got stale for me. This is because Insomniac's universe centers on a Peter Parker who's already earned his spider stripes. You'll hit the ground, and walls, running. From chapter one, you have a very robust moveset, plus there's a large skill tree full of powerful perks, an ever-expanding cache of eight upgradable web gadgets, not to mention a suit system that offers you great power, zero responsibility, and a buttload of fan service. Most of the 20 plus suits on offer will become yours simply through playing the main quest. With each new level up, or wardrobe change, comes a unique suit power and you'll probably unlock one of 23 suit perks as well. And you can equip three of these at any one time. In terms of spider chic, Insomniac offers a decent mix of comic inspired spandex along with some really fetching original designs. Better yet, these are all effectively cosmetic. Your preferred power and triple mods from one suit can be quickly applied to any other suit. You can zip through Manhattan looking like a futuristic cyber ninja from the year 2099, or just a shitty cosplayer wearing something from the Hobo Spidey Spring collection. 100% completionists can also earn the chance to feel the wind on their arachnads by stripping Spidey down to his underoos. I put the work in and unlocked this on spectacular difficulty. Totally worth it. Speaking of tingling sensations below the equator, the traversal system in Marvel's Spider-Man just the sheer joy of movement it offers through web slinging from point A to point B is pretty orgasmic. I've played every single Spider-Man game that has ever been, from Atari 2600 right up to 2014's The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And the last game that truly blew my mind in regards to web slinging 
was Treyarch's Spider-Man 2 in 2004. Zipping about in that game felt authentic and resulted in freewheeling fun. You just never forgot the first time you played it. I felt that same magical, childlike glee the first time I played this game. It just never gets old and is both easy to pick up but difficult to master. Long, lazy swings and free running up, over and across buildings can be achieved by tapping X occasionally and holding R2. Dive bombing and threading the needle through blocks of taxis in traffic jams is a phenomenal feeling, as is nailing the lateral zips and hotspot vaults which are imperative to beating the speed challenges. You can even make Spidey hot dog with tricks and near misses to snatch a bit of extra XP. Honestly, I can't think of a sandbox game that has movement that feels more empowering or looks as stylish as this. Admittedly, the play space here does feel a little bit more modestly sized because you're just getting the island of Manhattan, which is an area closer to the footprint of Watchdog 2 San Fran rather than the sprawling mega sandboxes of GTA 5 or Ghost Recon Wildlands. And if you do try to hot foot it off one of the bridges or out of the Lincoln Tunnel, you'll be turned back. You can't even swim out to Lady Liberty. Basically, Kurt Russell had an easier time escaping from New York. That said, what it lacks for square kilometers, this open world more than makes up for with astonishing fidelity and attention to detail. Whisk down a street level and this feels like a bona fide congested New York City street. Pedestrians will either get stoked to see you or pour you a tall glass of Big Apple side eye. Some even come up for a bunch of interactions. Selfie! Oh, I should have done web hands. Amusingly, if you ignore the petty crimes that befall these people, your dickishness will become hate fuel in a contextual Jonah Jameson podcast that will filter in over your comms. And he's stalking his prey. Somewhere there's a giant web with these poor pigeons stuck in it, waiting to be devoured. And will it stop at pigeons? Will we be next? On the topic of missions, I'm deliberately steering clear of any and all footage that could be spoilery to ensure that you get the full story experience. What I will say about it is this. I speed ran the main campaign in about, say, 10 hours, and to clear it 100% took about 14 more. And that's going to take longer if you're not good at puzzles, because Parker engages in a fair amount of science and or forensic investigations. Essentially, if you've ever played Pipe Dream, or were good at hacking vending machines in Bioshock, you're going to be just fine. All told, I thought the journey was great, but it never did rise to Naughty Dog levels of storytelling and performance. That said, Yuri Lowenthal puts in a solid performance as the plucky yet unlucky smartass that is Peter Parker. He's also well supported by a host of legacy Spider-Verse characters who have been reconfigured in really interesting ways. You can also expect to face no fewer than 10 iconic supervillains in very memorable and well constructed boss battles, which, sadly, are slightly marred by climaxes that are tied to insultingly easy quick time events. There are a few other iffy moments I noticed whilst playing too. At the time of review this game has the odd sort of ragdoll weirdness of enemies and objects getting trapped in geometry. This is even more painful than it looks. Also, secondary mission givers can sometimes start their conversations like a ventriloquist. You know, with sort of zero lip sync going on. Is something wrong? No. I just had to thank you for saving my daughter from those muggers. Oh, thank you, Spider-Man. That was a little more exciting than my average night of birding. But you know what? That's Blue Moon stuff. Like, nitpicking. I imagine those bugs will be squelched in the day one patch that's coming, and from what I hear it's going to be bringing a photo mode, a tougher ultimate difficulty, and a new game plus option. Will I play that when it comes out? Man, you bet your ass I will. Marvel Spider-Man is just an incredibly fun game to play, and I'll take any opportunity, any reason to return to it, even though I've already pocketed the Platinum. Honestly, TV salesmen could just run this game in store and sell 4K televisions like hotcakes. Plus the combat never ever got old, and I still think it's the most fun you can have swinging this side of a spouse swapping orgy. This is now THE Spider-Man game to beat, and if Red Dead Season wasn't just around the corner, I'd probably hand it Game of the Year right now. That's all the review I have for you today. I should also like to note that I've already uploaded a 4K playthrough of me smashing through this game, uh, and I've got videos of how to ace the combat, stealth and drone challenges. All of that's going to go live on launch day, which is September 7th. So, I don't know, maybe swing back if you're still curious. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, and I'll leave you to it.